Saturday the 9th of March 1907 Thomas Dennison and his wife Margaret had just left the Dyer's Arms pub to make their way home and they had to walk whew, up this hill on the way home and I'm out of breath because I've literally just walked all the way from down there and turn left and that takes you down towards Flit Road and where the Dyer's Arms pub is so as you can see it's quite a steep hill but on the way home uh, something happened Christ this is a bit messy yeah on the way home something tragic happened where Thomas started savagely beating his wife Margaret uh, I won't say to a pulp as such but basically he, uh, he punched her several times somewhere on this road or pathway as it is now um, and several witness came, witnesses came out and they came out to see what the commotion was caught Thomas in the act of beating his wife up but didn't really do much to save her or to help her oh, and then the following morning sometime after five o'clock on Sunday the 10th Thomas is walking up his wife's not in bed or she's not in the house so basically he's come down this road to see if there's any sign of her or maybe I don't know she could have gone to a neighbour's house but as he's come down this road that's when he's found the body of his wife Margaret now obviously he's probably panicking at this point so he's gone to his friend William Nuttall over on Todd Carr and Todd Carr for sure you is somewhere in that direction over there I mean there's a road that just goes through the trees and Todd Carr is over there so Thomas has gone to Williams to obviously inform him of what what's happened or what he's found his wife the body of his wife he's then come out with him to this area to see for himself and obviously horrified yeah Thomas was telling the truth anyway Thomas then goes to one of his neighbours who lived in the same uh, in the same house if you will at number 10 Cobb Castle Lane um, because there was three there was three floors or there was one of three floors and John Yates was one of the tenants so he's gone to John Yates' house or door knocked on the door he's then come out where obviously William Nuttall is stood near the body and uh, yeah the rest is history if they say and this is history now Thomas went for a policeman I think it was called PC Turner over in Haslinden in that direction somewhere over that way on what's called Berry Road uh, what is it about half an hour walk three quarters of an hour walk perhaps maybe less and uh, both men have come back down down Grain Road and obviously into this part here uh, so basically Thomas is then arrested he goes to court he's found guilty I think he's served about 12 years anyway but this is amazing where I'm stood right now we've got some kind of pathway which I presumed took you up to the houses which I think is here this is uh, Cobb Castle if you will all this you can see how how the pathway now is just totally gone the walls have gone now this I think this is the well I think this is the well where Margaret was found either on the day or the morning I should say 
I just stumbled next to this well when witnesses came out of the houses. So that's the well. Get up this hill. <sighs> well, this guys, this well and truly is history. Is that? Is it some kind of maybe? Is it, is it the bottom floor? Is it the ground floor of one of the houses? Is it a basement? That is awesome. You got some kind of ledge in there, some shelving. Found something else here, guys. I don't know what it is. Look at that. Again, it's obviously filled in. But this, this is amazing. There's a structure just over there. I don't know if you can see it. But that's some kind of weird, it's obviously not natural, but we're gonna, I don't think we're gonna be able to get up there, but we can have a close look, hopefully. Oh. I suppose I've got to be careful where I'm walking here. I'm not going through the bloody floor. But where we stood now, I would happily say, more certainly, that this is where the houses of Cobb Castle once stood. There's just, I mean, look at it. Definitely not going to get up there, guys. Not in this weather, anyway. Far too dangerous, guys. It's too wet, too slippery. Christ knows what I'm standing in. But this, this, I have to say, this is unbelievable. You know, I've lived in Helmshore and Haslingdon all my life. I'm 49 years old, I don't mind saying it. But I've lived here all my life and it was only two weeks ago I actually found out about this story and I didn't even know that this this pathway in this area existed until then it's crazy to think what what history is on your doorstep it really is and the good thing about doing these podcasts and setting this website up is I'm finding these places you know right on my doorstep using old maps tying them up with Google Maps you know using old old history um, and tying it up with modern technology if you will you know I think it's an amazing it's a hobby but it's an amazing thing you can do nowadays you know you can hunt down these places but yeah what is that up there I mean I know it's called Cobb Castle but is it Cobb Castle for a reason I mean is, I don't, I've, I've never heard of a castle in Haslingdon Helm Shore but yeah definitely up there in that, that tree line up there that is definitely not a natural structure I wouldn't have thought I think once uh, I think you probably ought to walk around the top way 
but I think I'll do that when uh, we have some dry weather because at the moment it's just far too wet and I'm slipping everywhere <laughs> oh and I'm now sinking in mud right anyway let's take some photographs and uh, I'll be using these photos for the podcast on my website which will obviously tell more of the story in more depth because I'm not getting wet at home while I'm recording that obviously but yeah this this really is an amazing little find right on my doorstep and I'm glad I've uh, I'm glad I've come out today even though it's raining hard uh, but yeah what an amazing amazing place this is certainly coming back here springtime summertime when it's a lot drier oh and another point of interest I might as well show you guys while we're here all this can you see the cars on the bypass that's the A56 now the A56 runs all the way to Rising Bridge further round the hill in the background that that road there guys used to be the East Lancs Railway a lot of history in that area especially over there you've got the old um, railway I don't know what you call them buildings maybe you know storage units storage buildings at the time um, a lot of the mills in this area you can see the containers here I think there used to be what's called Plantation Mill and Hutchbank Mill. I have covered a story um, about two young lads, James Malloy and Frank Kershaw, who both worked in this area. Um, and I don't know if you've read the podcast or heard the podcast, guys, but basically Frank Kershaw, young lad, I can't, top of me, I can't remember how old he was, but he ended up drowning, James Malloy, further on in Aslindon. You can just about make it out through the tree line where I'm pointing. There's a little sculpture if you will called the ufo the halo it's called in aslindon further back just over there is where james malloy unfortunately drowned that day but they both worked in this area just down here um but yeah all this used to be all mills and factories around here but as you can see now modern refurbishments and modern ways it's totally gone and even this part here is now all falling to the elements nature's reclaiming it but I'm so pleased I've come today despite the weather. I mean, there is the well. That is definitely a well, which you will hear more about when I come through the podcast. I've got to get down here now, guys. This is going to be fun. Bloody hell. It's going to fall on my ass here. Right. I'll go a bit further up this lane. I'm, I'm wet through, might as well. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get any more wet, am I? After the thought, before I came up here, I was thinking and I said to my wife, I wonder if there's cobblestones on this pathway or will they have been taken up? But look, it's peeking its way through here, you can see it. Look at that. All this here. 
So underneath all this, I'm just wondering if it is just full of the original cobbles from the day. These are the same paths that Thomas would have taken that fateful evening, just after eight o'clock on Saturday the 9th of March, 1907. I mean, to me, and I know to one or two other people who I talk with a lot on YouTube and on Twitter, this, this is why it interests quite a lot of us, because history, it's there, you know, it's right underneath our feet. I mean, look at this, you've still got that still standing. I mean, when it was built, Christ knows, but it's over 100, what, 150 year old? And okay, some of it's come down, as you can see, but otherwise, I would like to say built to last. I mean, over the years, obviously, you're going to have had your tour makers, your vandals come up here, smoking weed and drinking and what have you, and they've probably decided to knock a few walls over in the time. Can't be out, I mean, it's the way. 21st centuries nowadays, isn't it? But look, I mean, okay, it might not look safe, but it's there. But this, this is an amazing view. The pathway comes up. I mean, I don't know if they did, I presume there was a wall here. You can see the path that walked all the way back behind it, and then obviously brings you out further up. But that's just an amazing, an amazing view. So I'm thinking, guys, the body of Margaret was found somewhere in this proximity. Now, it is hard to pinpoint it exactly now because the wall that was across here, that went all the way up, similar to this one, all this, all this is now gone off, as you can see, nothing here. But her body was facing upwards, her head was facing upwards, I should say, with uh, her bonnet a couple of yards away, her body was slightly further down, her clothes were all rearranged, um, and this is where Thomas would have left his house. Now, he could have come down, I guess, down the path here, it could have come down here, it could have come down one of these. It's hard to say, to pinpoint it right now. Um, we have got an investigation map that the police did at the time, which shows it, and I'll try and line it up, but I'm pretty confident her body was somewhere in this location here. Look at the colours on this wall, all the moss. How green it is. I mean, again. I don't know the exact time, did it? But what is it? For every 10 years you get a millimetre of growth, is it? Of moss? I could be wrong, but... Somebody wants to tell me something similar to that. So there it is, Cobb Castle Road. The scene where Margaret Denison passed away sadly back in 1907. I'm thinking, guys, this may be the edge, the outer wall, of maybe the last house. So all the houses would have been across there. Cobb Castle. That's what I'm thinking. Because there's nothing here which resembles any structure that's probably missing. We've still got the wall, the outer wall down here for the path. But I'm thinking that may be the beginning or end, whichever way you look at it, of the row of houses where Thomas lived at number 10, Cog Castle Road. It's a Cog, Cobb Castle Road. That's one thing you might pick up on this video, guys. I keep saying Cog Castle. I don't know where I've got Cog from. Check this out here. Check the green out on that. Trying not to blow my arse now while I'm going down here. This has had a lot more damage over the years. Oh, shit, in they went. Could easier. Presume the drains. Get a weird place to have them. Oh, this is deep. Oh, shit, this is where I got my ass. Right, so we're coming to the end of the. Uh, of that part. Good job I put my boots on, I'll say that guys. Oh, 
I'm going to take you to where the guy's arms pub used to be where the event that unfolded that night found the same sweet place Cobb Castle Club didn't even know it existed until two weeks ago but hey oh that's what it's all about doing these videos we're out and about adventuring and exploring we're going to go down uh, to what is commonly known as Flip Road and Flip Road is where the Dyes Arms pub used to be. Now I'm going to show you before an old historical photo of uh, the pub in a minute and I'll line it up with what it's like today and you'll be amazed guys just how much it's changed. But you can see how steep this is, you see? And then obviously you've got to go up, turn right and it's even steeper. Uh, it's windy down here guys, you've got history people on its way through here. the old cobbles still here so to the left where these storage units are that is where Butch Bank used to be Butch Bank Mill and I think it was Plantation Mill if I got it wrong I'll put the real name down below but yeah over here is where Frank Church and James Malodge used to work I'll put a link to that story down below so you can see that now, I'm going to take you to where the Dyer's Arms pub is and if I said to you guys it was there right in that corner that is where the pub used to be so the A56 is going straight across as you can see all the way across here guys now the East Lanks Railway used to run I'm not saying it was directly on this but it used, I think it was further back because here where these trees are that is where the Dyer's Arms pub was located right in that corner. So if you will, back in the day, you had Thomas and Margaret, they left the pub, walked probably across that road, or staggered across the road, I don't know which. They've walked all the way up there, past my car. They've walked all the way up that lane where we've just come down. Obviously turn right, and then obviously that's when the events unfolded. But it all kicked off just before that, because as they come out of the pub, it all kicked off where, where my car is now, where the telegraph pole is. There used to be an old lamp post there, and apparently Margaret was seen stumbling onto that. In doing so, neighbours have come out the houses, they've come off Flip Road, which is here, they've walked up, they've seen what's going on, they've tried to stop it. Um, it's got a bit, I won't say threatening with people as such, maybe a little bit, but not too bad. But basically, he was told to leave with B, don't get involved with uh, man and wife. So anyway, they've carried on going up there, and that's when it's all started. Well, it's amazing to think that there was a pub called the Dyer's Arms just right there on that corner. And I will try and, like I say, I will match up a photo now with an old photo. So just so you can see what it looks like at the time. All these trees weren't there at the time. There was other buildings. You could see the chimney of Hutch Bank and Plantation Mill is just in the background just there. Um, you could see more buildings here. But yeah, all that, nothing there at the time. Pub here and some kind of house or building going all the way down here. <laughs> 